uh, every Sunday we have or for a normal Sunday about 800, 850 people, morning service. Evening service we will have about 175, 200, sometimes 250. It all depends, up and down. In our first healing service, there were only four new people. But the time of the bombing, we had more than 300, 350 people coming attending for the healing service. These are people from all over the place. We have been having a 100-day fasting and prayer last year. We finished it on the 25th of December. All that 100 days, the Lord led us. I was preaching on the subject of holiness unto God. So there was so much cleansing in the church. Then uh, in February 24th, I was speaking on the subject on death of righteous. At the end of the ser sermon, I, a great burden came into my heart and I prophesied saying there's going to be a big accident and many are going to be going to get hurt and this church is going to be affected. And in the coming days, we wait on the Lord uh, to receive us a word from the Lord. That's why I write my sermon. So I spoke on, only the Lord stood with me. That there was times in Paul's life, uh, there was no one for him. Only the Lord could stand with him. I had been speaking continually for two weeks on as your soul lives importance of our life, our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not coming to church, it's about walking with Christ. Then I spoke glorious on the subject of glorious resurrection. That is, everybody, everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus will be resurrected. But glorious resurrection Paul speaks about is about people who are martyred for Christ. So I was speaking on the life of Stephen and when how when Stephen, before he was stoned, martyred, he said, I saw a vision, Jesus standing. So I was saying, why was Jesus standing? Because when Jesus died on the cross, the Father said, come and sit. So why did Jesus stand? So I was explaining our culture. When there's a funeral procession on the road, we stand, respect. So I said, why the Je reason Jesus stood was to respect the martyr. Then I said, to be conformed to the death of Christ. And I said, I'm going to break a communion now. Remember the, what Jesus did on the cross. Remember your flesh is going to unite. Your blood is going to mix with the blood of Jesus and expect miracles from now. And that was the last communion I had with our people. And God did a lot of miracles. On the 18th, I fly to Norway for the meetings. But right through, I, my heart was very heavy. On the 21st Sunday, five o'clock, then I get this call, bomb blast. We lost 29 people, our precious people. I see this as a, a seed. In Tamil it says, Kodu my money. Verse says, Kodu my money, Nilatil Vilundu, Saga Vital, Aditanitirkum, Setta the Yagil, Mikin the Palane Kodukum. It says, a seed, unless a seed falls and dies, it will be single. But if it falls and dies, it will bear much fruit. So these 29 precious souls, big or small, child or an adult, they were sown into the kingdom. I have 101%, I'm sure, 
I know and I know and I know all of them are in heaven. God has taken them. Okay, 29 people died, 86 people injured out of the 86, about 42 odd. They want long term medical, they are dependent on medical assistance. For some it's going to take one to four months to recover, for some it's going to take one to six months or nine months to recover, for some it's going to take one year or one and a half years to recover. Some going to be paralyzed some partially paralyzed, some they had underground ongoing operations. So all the funds we are receiving, we, we, will, we are using on the victims and we will look into their future. Not now till about one year, one and a half years, until everything sorted out, this project will go on. So all those who had helped us financially, uh, we are having funds. We are spending now and also we are looking after those who are looking after these patients, their expenses we are looking at. There were others in the church, other children in the church. Uh, those who didn't have a sharp nail in their body, they didn't have a wound, but they are emotionally, they are affected. They don't want to come to church here. They are scared. So they are also wounded. They are also affected. We need to look after them. Our service, we have all seven day services. Every third week we have fasting and prayers. Now the church is broken still it's blasted burnt it's going to take take some time everybody is more interested in the victims i understand that's correct but for our people for our believers what they are saying is only in the presence of god only in the services we have our prayer time our fasting that they can be healed that's what they are saying. We don't want to move from this place because we are here for many years. But they are scared to come here. I am not going to force them. So we need to build a church. This time I am going to build a church where we would uh, hold at least 2,500 to 3,000 people capacity. There is no going to be no walls, no doors. Any person can walk into the church. That's the church we are going to build. So this is my request as a pastor of Zion Church Batiklo, help us to construct a church. Help us to start a church, help us to get us back on track. Thank you very much again for standing with us shoulder to shoulder and uh, li to listening for listening to our story also. I love you all. Bless you all. Amen. Mm -hmm.